Hey everyone and welcome to the video report of round 5 of the European Youth Chess Championships here in Mamaya. So, after round 5, um, well, during round 5 we were struggling quite a bit as you can see, 8.5 points. And um, the lowest score so far we've had during this tournament, just like round 3 basically. Um, also a few top players didn't manage to win their games against some lower rated opponents. Um, as you can see, quite a few draws in the under-18, under-16 categories. Um, also under-14, they all scored a draw. Um, Ilkado is still doing pretty well, 4 and a half out of 5, and um, he drew his stronger rated, his higher rated opponent today, so he's still in shit first. Um, some other players really need to um, try and fight for a win again to um, stay close to the top players. Um, also, it's good to see that um, He Chen in the under-10, um, after he lost the second round, he scored three consecutive wins. Is on four out of five again, so he is back in the top. And also Machtelt, also in the under ten. Um, after losing round two and three, she won two games, so she's also climbing um, back to the top boards. Um, then we have to mention Marit in the girls under fourteen. She had a bye in round four, which is pretty unfortunate. But round five, she managed to win a game. Um, but more about that later in this video. Um, so yeah, round six uh, today we'll need some. Um, well, we, we do need we need, we need some points. It's like that. We just need some points to um, stay close to the um, top boards. Um, also, we just had a rest day yesterday, which was quite nice. Um, big part of the delegation played soccer on the beach, and um, everyone just had a swim, uh, enjoyed their day. So today we're full of energy again and ready to fight. So that's good news. And for today, I want to show you uh, two game fragments from um, our players. And the first one is from um, the game between, I gotta spell his name, or pronounce his name correctly, um, Plutinovicius against Lucas van Forest. And this was quite a close game because um, Chances on both sides, and Lucas was better for most of the game. He's still up two pawns, but as you can see, his king is quite vulnerable. And his opponent um, missed a very good chance here to um, to win the game. Um, you might have looked at the position yourself already. If you um, want to think for a bit, I can advise you to pause the video. Um, so you can have a look yourself. It's, it's quite interesting. Um, because uh, the best way for White here to continue the game is to play the move Rook G1 which has several purposes. The first one is simply um, to stop any move like queen d1 check, which is simply annoying because black has some chances to make it perpetual. And the second of, uh, idea is that white is threatening queen g8 uh, to simply win the queen on d5. Um, but besides that, also a checkmate threat, of course. So black has to do something. So he has to go king e6. Um, now queen g8 doesn't quite work because black can play rook f7 and there's no way for white to um, to profit from this. But instead he can go queen c8 and now he's luring the black king into the center which is quite dangerous because now of course if the king goes to f7 you have queen g8 checkmate so that's not going to work. So he needs to go to e5 and now rook e1 check and now black is in trouble because now his king is getting forward even further. Um, because after king f4, um, queen c1 check. Um, it's getting pretty dangerous. King g4, and uh, rook g1 check, and as you can see the king simply doesn't have too many squares because there's always a checkmate threat. Um, I'll just show you one example, let's say he goes to h3, queen e3 check, king h4, queen g3 check, king h5, queen g5 check, mate. So he can't really go to h3 and also king f3 um, is a problem because now queen c3 check King e2, rook e1 check. And this is a simple checkmate now. King h2, queen g3 checkmate. So uh, it's quite an important idea. Uh, once again, to go rook g1, force king e6, queen c8 to force king e5, and now rook e1 to force the king further to the center. And when the king is out in the open, uh, he's very vulnerable for checkmating ideas, um, as, you just have saw, as you have just seen in the uh, lines I showed you. So um, Lucas was. Maybe not happy with the result, but if you look at the game and the chances his opponent had as well, he couldn't really complain too much. So, um, the game eventually ended in a draw, which is quite fair if you look at the chances for both sides.
So the next game I want to show you is the game uh, between um, Marit Adema and Neda Bojovic. As I just mentioned, Marit scored the first win after her bye in round four. And um, it was it was maybe a bit lucky um, because in the preparation I showed her this opening trick. Um, I didn't really expect her to get it on the board, but I just wanted to you know show this idea because it's might be useful sometime. Um, but luckily she did get it on the board, so I'll show you what happened. So d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, rook on d5, pawn takes, bishop g5. Now this is quite an, um, well, it's quite an easy setup for white. You have a very easy plan, you can just develop your pieces, quite, com quite comfortable. So bishop e7, e3, knight d7, queen c3. So black normally doesn't have too much to worry about, except for one thing though. Knight e2, rook e8, castles, h6. Bishop f4. And now uh, I myself made a mistake um, many years back and I played the move knight h5, unaware of the threat um, white has here, which is a beautiful move. Knight takes d5. It's so awesome. Now, if black takes with a pawn, you got bishop c7 simply trapping the queen because the queen is just locked in by all the own pieces, uh, which means black cannot take back on d5, and if black takes a bishop on f4, you seem to take back with the knight on d5 and you just want the d5 pawn. Easy um, once you know the trick. Uh, it can be quite difficult to see behind the board. Now in the game black didn't play knight h5 um, and like a move like knight f8, all these kind of moves are so healthy and also um, give the black queen some space so this idea won't work anymore. Um, but her opponent uh, was a bit unfortunate and found the move b6 which doesn't really help the queen. Um, now the d5 pawn is defended, but the trick still works because now white can go knight b5 with the same idea of going to c7. Um, so the game continued, pawn takes b5, and after bishop c7, black simply resigned because the queen is trapped and um, white is just um, well, totally winning here. But there's not much you can do. Well, you can go bishop b7 here, which gives the black queen some breathing space. But now after knight c7, um, simply attacking both rooks, um, you'll win the exchange, and that gives you a big advantage for the rest of the game. So, nice little opening trick, and um, pretty cool she did get it on the board after showing it her uh, in the morning. But that was quite nice. Um, so yeah, yesterday the rest day, as I just mentioned. So today, round 6, and... Um, well, it's time to step up the game. If you want to stay close to the top board, you got to fight. And uh, score some points, and um, it's going to be difficult. But we have some um, good candidates for um, for the medals, so um, hope they do well. Um, I think we got seven players in the live board today, so it's really worth following them. And the game started um, 3 p.m. Uh, local time, which is like 2 p.m. Central European time. So make sure to tune in. You can uh, find the live games on the tournament website, which is linked below this video. Uh, or you can, of course, watch on Chess24, ChessBomb.com, Follow Chess, etc. All these websites also transmit the games. So um, I want to wish all the players good luck for today. And I want to thank you all for watching. And um, if you have any comments about the games or the videos, uh, please drop a comment or drop a like or a follow or whatever. Um, any feedback is appreciated. And um, I hope to see you all in the next video report. So thanks for watching and goodbye.